this has been a total <laughs> this has been a total train wreck. Star Wars like conversations, movie. Disney era. There complete. it is. There it is. We, we did we it. We did it. Just to have a safety arm, I'm going to pull it up on Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> so we'll have that, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's been been a hot minute. It's been a month. We're alive. Longer. Yes. We're alive. We, we are alive. <laughs> Thank you, uh, 18 concerned subscribers. Yes. Um, yeah, but we're we're trying to finish up our Star Wars series. Uh, we're going to talk about the rise of Skywalker. Unfortunately. And neither of us brought notes. And no. we don't remember what the movie is about. No. And I just learned <laughs> that Fortnite is canonically part of Star Wars. So why don't yes. we start there? Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So just to expand on what you're saying, Reed, first of all, hello, everyone. We're back. Very glad to be back to uh, finish out 2021 here on Observation Conversations. And we are finishing out our, I guess you could call this our chapter one of star wars conversations recapping everything up until this point uh in the disney era of star wars first we had the force awakens then we did the last jedi we did uh we talked about um rogue one and solo and both seasons of the mandalorian um and i think you could say we kind of left it all we left it all on the field after the last jedi and the mandalorian episodes because we have been putting off and putting off and putting off. Mandalorian ended up being like a three-parter, right? Yeah, that was a just two-parter. Ended, yeah, oh, that was a two-parter. Yeah, and, and then Solo was up talking for, Yeah, because yeah. we just ended up talking for so long. Because that was actually fun to talk about. And The Last yeah. Jedi, even though we pretty much hated it, that was fun to talk about. I don't know how that the Rise of Skywalker is all that much fun to talk about. Um, but we'll see. But, you know, we as much as we've been dreading it, we've got to talk about it because that is kind of the bookend sadly of the sky yeah, what, way, way to end on a low note yeah tell me about it so you know it came in with a roar and it went out with a whimper the like sequel that. trilogy so yeah let's talk about it as you said no notes no preparation we're just gonna yeah, shoot so from the you, hip here. You, you were like how did this movie start yeah so and i was like well leia in, died because carrie fisher passed away 
Yes. And then you're like, oh, there was the signal that went out. Yeah, so in the opening crawl, one of the first things we learn in The Rise of Skywalker, I remember this, is that the galaxy now knows that Palpatine has returned because a mysterious broadcast has been sent out across the galaxy. Just kind of basically, I I, I think, no, it was a recording of Palpatine, and he's, you know, making some sort of ah, eerie ah, proclamation. Ah, ah, ah. Exactly, yeah, it's exactly. Like a laugh. Yeah, yeah, and so, and so, yeah, so, this signal, as some of you Star Wars fans out there may recall, was never actually, we never actually saw or heard the content of this signal in the movie. It was just referenced to the opening crawl, and then next thing you know, we have Kylo Ren, who has traveled to Exegol to meet him. He's already found him. But that's not to say that this signal was never shown anywhere because in perhaps the most cringe detail of the sequel trilogy, the only place we ever saw this signal was a month before the movie released. I think this was like late November, early December, 2019 in one of the big Fortnite live events where you know how they used to have that, like um, that drive-in movie theater area in Fortnite. They like, they like played it there. They like played the, this, broadcast recording there in Fortnite, and then that's just canon to star wars now so as you were saying so Fortnite is star yeah. wars canon there you go <laughs> there it is so and yeah. that's the end of our podcast thank you ladies and gentlemen yep. for listening yep. <laughs> that's the, that's that's really all we came back i mean to talk where, to you guys where do you go from there like how bad <sighs> like disney fucked up star wars Hmm. We we all knew about that, but just learning that it got so bad that now Fortnite is canonically part of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, so I I don't I don't know what to do with that information, but so, I hate it. So let's generalize and then let's let's go from the macro to the micro. So okay. on the macro level, you had The Force Awakens. The the soft reboot that would define all soft reboots, even though really it was just following the Jurassic World model from a year from a year prior, or no no I think they were, those were both 2015. But you know it was the Rise of Skywalker was very much the Jurassic World of Star Wars. Um, but ever since the, or no sorry, The Force Awakens is very much the Jurassic World of Star Wars. But after The Force Awakens, every soft reboot is basically just referred to as The Force Awakens of XYZ franchise. It is the most famous soft reboot. Soft reboot. Yeah. And so that one, I think... So you had that. It was a smash hit. Everybody said they liked it, even the, the, even those people who weren't really that keen on it, but they were like, okay, you know, yeah, it was just New Hope over again, but like, you know. Everyone maybe do said they else. liked it as soon as they walked out of the theater. Yeah. And then like a month later, collectively, people were just like thinking about it and digesting mm. it, and they were like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so you have that, the smash hit that was well-liked at first, but then as time went on, became more and more creatively bankrupt, then you had The Last Jedi, which was a movie that, as we've said, for better or far more often for worse, was certainly nothing but true to itself <laughs> and certainly original. There were a lot of choices made by its writer-director, Ryan Johnson, that were totally out of left field and were bizarre and obtuse and plot hole creating um i but, did not need to see where blue milk comes from no <laughs> but you know that movie also made a ton of money and that movie at least had its vocal supporters as much as it had yeah. obviously many vocal detractors um ourselves included and so now two years later we arrive at the end of this 25 car pileup <laughs> that is the sequel trilogy um i don't know if you've ever seen the end of the movie the blues brothers but it's pretty much just that imagine that kind that level of carnage is essentially is essentially I, what I, the sequel trilogy is i need to i need context i've not seen that movie oh it's a great movie we'll we'll, we'll, too, we'll, we'll 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 watch a clip at, you know in a minute but um okay. it's pretty much that um 
and the rise of Skywalker. So now you have J.J. Abrams coming back after The Force Awakens. Originally, the idea for the sequel films was each film was going to have its own director. J.J. Abrams was going to be Force Awakens, Ryan Johnson was Last Jedi, and then I believe it was going to be Colin Trevorrow was going to direct the third film, who also, you know, again... He he was he was the director of Jurassic World, so he's also kind of one of the um, one of the masterminds of the modern era of soft reboots. Um, but after how divisive the Last Jedi was with the fans, Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy came back to the drawing board. They said, "All right, we really fucked up the sequel trilogy." You know, apparently when you're dealing with a massive and massively beloved multi-billion dollar franchise it's probably good to like have a plan and have an overarching story that you want to tell before you start making the movies yep we didn't do that but what we can do is at least go back to the same guy that directed the first one of those sequels that was more or less well liked um oh yeah and you know who we should pair him with because this is this is a real big brain play. What if we brought back J.J. Abrams right, but instead of pairing him with the co-writer of The Empire Strikes Back like for, 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 the, for The Force Awakens, what if we pair him with one of the writers of Batman v. Superman? Because everybody loved that movie. Yes. Yes. Now, now we're, now we're big. <sighs> now, now, wouldn't you agree, Reed? Isn't that a big brain play? J.J. Abrams teaming up with the creative heft behind the beloved superhero film, Batman v. Superman? If by big brain, you mean swollen? <laughs> swollen and yes. medically dangerous? Yes. <laughs> yes, and so that's what we'll do. We'll bring J.J. back, give him the Batman v. Superman writer, and he will restore the sequels to what they were always supposed to be. He'll just figure it out. We won't give him any help. <laughs> we'll just give him a boatload of cash and say, please fix this, and just let him do whatever he wants. Um, and came out, it landed with a thud. It landed with a thud. Still made a ton of money, sure. But critically it did not do well i think it, let me check let me check on the exact yeah, was rotten it, tomato was it score worse than oh much worse Last much Jedi? worse yeah yeah let, 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 let me double check on what the what the actual score was but i, but I believe it was in the 40s and the, um, the problem is like you know it's also just it's worse partly because it's just so forgettable like yes. at least the last jedi really stood out because it was very different it was really 52% divisive on Rotten Tomatoes. Ugh, yeah. So it uh, had a, it had a 52 on Rotten Tomatoes, but an 86 audience score, which is like pretty much flipped from the Last Jedi. Last Jedi had a high critic score, but a very low fan score. So, gotcha. So, but yes, it was. It really felt like, and we've and we've talked about this in our previous videos. It really felt like J.J. Abrams, in the most vindictive ways possible, going back and retconning all the things. Like, so, Ryan Johnson comes in and tears down so much of what J.J. Abrams established in The Force Awakens. J.J. Abrams comes back and, in even more petty ways, tears down everything Ryan Johnson set up in The Last Jedi to restore his vision of the rise of Skywalker. Like, it's this just unbelievable pettiness from both like, of them the first thing you learn mm -hmm. in just drama acting writing is yes and <laughs> like number one rule of improv but it applies to writing just yes and mm -hmm. and both of them tried to tear each other down and it mm -hmm. shows i mean literally it the first really shows the first actual scene of the movie after the crawl is kylo ren with his helmet back on fully restored <laughs> yeah. which which we saw ryan johnson make such a point of destroying in his first kylo scene in the last jedi i mean and that really sets the tone for the whole movie like everything that jj abrams said all right i can't get back everything i set up in the force awakens because obviously now snoke is dead yada 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 but Everything that I can retcon, 
to like just force feed my vision for the sequels into this and shoehorn it into this last movie, I will. And I'm gonna take it from I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to eleven. I'm gonna take it way beyond any level that anybody would deem reasonable. I mean, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to this, but. Okay, Ryan Johnson killed Snow. Well, guess what? He's just a puppet anyway. Palpatine grew him in a fucking jar. And also, he's hiding. He's alive. He's hiding out on this scary, rocky lightning planet. And he has a thousand fucking Star Destroyers. And he's going to take back the galaxy. Like, it's, like, beyond insanity. <laughs> so. How did that remain a secret? Where did he get all the resources? Yes. The material, the crew, <laughs> to build that many ships. <laughs> okay, so... Mexico so... is supposed to be the secret planet that's, like, impossible to get to. Mm-hmm. Where did he get the crew for all of those ships? Where did they come from? Does it they matter? They were just, like, random-ass dudes. Does it even matter? It's the last movie. When are we going to revisit this? It doesn't matter. Um, very Fuck true. logic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, as you can tell, audience, Reed and I, we've just lost all will to to, to, to maintain any structure. You yeah. know, it's... it's. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we... Again, like, we started out, we were like, I don't remember how this movie goes. Yeah. I just, I remember a few key points. Um, One of them, I actually, I want to bring up. Um, there's, there's a scene that just bothers me so, so much. Mm. Is that, like, Ray and her party... Uh, God, the more I talk about it, the more I'm, like, remembering other things that really annoy <laughs> me. But, like, Ray and her party find this knife. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to lead them to a Wayfinder, mm-hmm. which will take them to Snoke on Exegol. Mm. Um, and this knife is supposed to be some kind of clue as to how they get it. Um, and it leads them to this planet, and they're standing on the edge of the cliff overlooking the wreckage of the old Death Star. Mm. Very cool visual. Interesting set to visit. Mm-hmm. And Ray takes the dagger and she like pulls out this little like semicircular piece mm. uh, that happens to line up with the wreckage of the Death Star. <laughs> and oh, then there's like God. a circle on it so she knows where in that wreckage the Wayfinder will be. Yeah. One. It says nothing as to which room, how far in it'll be. <laughs> but two, that only works from that one vantage point. Like, what <laughs> if they were, like, a few feet to the right? Yeah, a couple yards. Left? Yeah, <laughs> like, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, it's, it's there so There's no instruction on that. There was no, like, nothing on the cliffside that said, stand here. There was no axe. It was just so poorly thought out. And it was like, this is dumb. But yeah. she explores the wreckage. She finds the Wayfinder. Um, and then, you know, mimicking the, you know, Luke fighting Vader, uh, illusion on Dagobah Mm -hmm. and like realizing that he could become his father, seeing his face in the mask. Um, yeah, JJ decided to copy that and just show this random ass clip of Ray with, uh, a double-sided lightsaber that then folds up to be a normal lightsaber with two blades. <laughs> Functionally, no different from just a one-bladed lightsaber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's wider, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, but now we have the um the laser sword from Halo in Star Wars. Yes. So <laughs> I... why? It's so Why? stupid. Yeah, I get I, I get you want to show like Ray struggling with her feelings with the dark side, but that was dumb. It that was, was dumb. That whole scene dumb. The yeah, one thing yeah. I did like, I mm. liked how they introduced more um stormtroopers that had been unbrainwashed. Mm-hmm. Um like fugitive stormtroopers. I thought that was cool. Did they yeah. explore that in any meaningful way? No. Not at all. Not even remotely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, 
Um, so yeah, so yeah, I I also have a major plot hole I want to point out about that that whole sequence, but 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 let's let's try to go through this and just hit. Should it we should we point. try to recap the plot and so, take it chronologically? Yeah, so okay. so so let's just start here. Following the resurrected Emperor Palpatine's threat, that's the broadcast that was yep. only referenced in Fortnite. <laughs> um, Kylo Ren obtains a Sith compass called a Wayfinder that leads him to the planet Exegol. There he finds Palpatine, who reveals that he created Snoke as a puppet ruler to control the First Order and lure Kylo to the dark side. Palpatine unveils the Final Order. So stupid. The Final Order? The First Order? The Final We never even really knew what the First Order means. What, is the, what, yeah. what, what, makes, it, what makes it First? Or the First Order? And now it's the Final Order. Sure, whatever. He may as well like just New Order it. would have made yeah. sense. Yeah, like the New Order. First sure. Order? the final order i mean admittedly that does sound scary but what the fuck does it mean nothing uh <laughs> this whole movie means nothing it's an empty shell yeah a secret armada of super laser equipped star destroyers so essentially what these are so he has like i said a thousand fucking star destroyers okay wait, wait, wait. these yeah he has he has thousands of star destroyers mm -hmm. with these super laser cannons yes which are which essentially are the same which are the same laser cannons that were on Star Killer Base. Yes. Which, if you remember, literally consumed a sun just to fire it once. <laughs> and now it's just mounted to a ship. Yep. A thousand works. times. Yeah. No, it's 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 no it's no big deal really. What? It, 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 listen, Reed. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. No, this no is the end. No fiber to direct the beam. No suns being consumed. Nothing just... matters. <laughs> it doesn't. Don't worry about it. You're just just let the feels overtake you. Leia's Leia's passed away. It's very sad. Just let the feelings. I mean, don't think. Rip Carrie Fisher for real, but well, yeah, but I mean, it's you know, the way the movie handled it wasn't terrible. Not, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't yes. particularly good, um, you know, but yeah, now that's the whole thing about this movie is that just don't think about it, just go with it, just just accept what the movie is trying to feed you. You can't think about it; doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Just, just. Enjoy the laser fights. Just enjoy Palpatine being back. Just be be docile. Exactly. Just just let it happen. We've, so what, what we've already next got your money in this engaging engaging movie that I paid twenty two fifty to see. <laughs> so he tells Kylo to find and kill Rey, who is continuing her Jedi training under Resistance leader Leia Organa. Poe Dameron and Finn deliver intelligence that Palpatine is on Exegol, so they also know too. I mean, everybody fucking knows where, you know, what's going on in Exegol. It doesn't matter. Um, so Palpatine had this whole secret fleet ready to go, could have launched at any time. Yep. And he's like, hold on one, one sec, let me telepath this message to the universe. <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to attack you in like three days. <laughs> I'm back. Isn't it scary? Did you miss me? I could me? have surprised you, but no. <laughs> Yeah, and and also, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense because as we learned in Battlefront 2, the story campaign of which actually is Star Wars canon, that's confirmed, oh, really? we saw what Palpatine's plan was after the second Death Star was destroyed and after the Empire fell. He's like, in the event of my death, in the event of the second Death Star being destroyed, we are going to initiate Operation Cinder, which is essentially destroy everything. If I can't have the galaxy, nobody can have it. Yeah. Burn, loot, massacre, kill, obliterate, just whatever you can. Just burn it all to the ground. But, of course, Palpatine's not dead. He's hiding out on Exegol with a thousand Star Destroyers and people to crew all these Star Destroyers. And he's got this whole big plan to return in just a few years. So, well, not To do what? <laughs> but, Operation you know, Cinder still. Yeah, I mean, get to do the same thing. The yeah. To do to do the exact same thing, and also, it was also referenced by Bill Burr's character in The Mandalorian. He's talking about that that operation that he's describing in that season two episode. That's Operation Cinder when he was ordered yeah. to carry out that massacre. That was what Operation Cinder was. So, yeah, but no, 
Palpatine wasn't dead. He, so essentially, he gave an order to destroy everything that he was planning to reconquer in a couple de- decades later anyway. And also, he didn't tell anybody about it until now when he's telling everybody about it, even though it's supposed to be a secret. Well, it's not really supposed to be a secret because everybody knows about it anyway. <laughs> um, moving on. Yeah, what if what if there were like parts of the the empire that were like still active mm. actively committing operation Which, cinder mm. like just killing everyone destroying planets so like palpatine's dead we have to destroy everything and then he broadcasts this message saying like Fuck. i'm back and i'm gonna take <laughs> over and rule everything and yeah they're which, just like oh shit <laughs> which we also see that in the mandalorian i mean it's not just the first order there are empire remnants who are yeah. so loyal to that command structure they're like little pockets yeah exactly but you know Ray reads in Luke Skywalker's notes that a Sith Wayfinder can lead them to Exegol. Ray, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, BB-8, and C-3PO depart in the Millennium Falcon to Pasana to find a hidden clue leading to the Wayfinder. How do they know so, about this clue? They depart to lead to find a hidden clue leading to the Wayfinder. It, it how, how do they know that it's on this planet? Uh, oh, well, because she reads it in Luke Skywalker's notes. So. Oh. Yeah, Luke Skywalker knew, knew about this the whole time, too. Yeah, he, 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 he knew about Exegol. He knew how to get there. Yeah, he knew everything. Wow, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, we should talk about... Um... Oh, no, actually, no. We'll, 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 we'll get to that later on. Okay, so Kylo initiates a force bond with Rey to discover her location. So in the first couple of movies, these these skype calls that the two that these two have had have been uh, involuntary they just happen and yeah. you know in the last jedi we're told that snoke has been connecting them the whole time to manipulate them mm. um but now kylo as the new supreme leader of the first order he's a, he's risen to such a power level he can just get her you just get her on the phone anytime um they can just talk um he travels to Pasana, which also, you know, we we learn about a lot of new force abilities in this movie, a, a lot of new force abilities, uh, which many of which do introduce a lot of questions, because if the Jedi could do this the whole time, well, then how does that recontextualize all these other events yeah. that happened previously? Um, but we'll we'll talk more about that. But um, uh, yes, yeah, so. Um, he travels to Pasana with his warrior subordinate, the Knights of Ren, who don't do anything. You know, we've been we've been teased about the Knights of Ren for two whole movies. You know, they're supposed to be this like these like awesome, like really good fighters that all that are almost at Kylo Ren's level in their own right, and they do almost nothing in this movie. They're total fucking pushovers. Yep. Um, all they do is die. Yeah, pretty Spo- much. Spoiler alert: uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie. Yeah, I'm for this... sure everyone has seen this movie, and if you haven't, just don't. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, all all they do is die at the end. Pretty much, yeah. That's it. Uh, okay, so we meet Lando. Lando's back. Lando Calrissian. Hey, is here baby, Lando's back. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah, he's still Harrison he's still... Ford didn't want to do more than one of these, and yeah, well, <laughs> well, but they Gary Fisher they... died, so uh, third and Mark Hamill got written out, so uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, but he, as as we've seen, even Harrison Ford couldn't escape this shit show, um, as we'll see. So. Lando helps Ray and her friends find the clue, which is uh, the dagger you were talking about, inscribed with Sith text, which C-3PO's programming for- forbids him from interpreting, and the remains of a Jedi bounty hunter named Achi and ship. Ray senses Kylo nearby and faces him. The First Order captures the Falcon, Chewbacca, and the dagger. Attempting to save Chewbacca, Ray accidentally destroys a First Order transport with Force Lightning. Believing Chewbacca is dead, the group S escapes on Achi's ship. So, there's a, so this is the part of the movie where everybody, so everybody thinks Ray may have just accidentally killed Chewbacca. Yep. Um, and also, Ray did uh, Force Lightning, which is very much traditionally a Sith power. So, 
what's going on here? I don't know what's going on. Also, did she just kill Chewbacca? Oh, that kind of sucks. Um, but no time, because they have to travel to Kajimi, where a droid smith extracts the text, the Sith text from C-3PO's memory, revealing coordinates to the Wayfinder. Okay, so this droid smith. We get to talk about this movie's cute gimmick to sell toys in The Force Awakens. It was BB-8. He's a little soccer ball. Rolls around. Kids love him. You could you could even get you could even buy your own at Disney World. In Last Jedi, you had the Porgs. There's these little these little, these little like Furbies <laughs> that make a little noise. These little punchable birds. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're they're pretty much just Furbies. And um, uh, the best the best thing they will ever contribute to the Star Wars universe is when Chewbacca skewers a couple of them and <laughs> cooks them and is about to eat them. Yeah. Um, in this movie, we get arguably the best one. It's Babu Frick. He's this adorable little guy. He's got his little wilting equipment. He says, "Hey, hey!" And that's hey. you know, and he's just he's just adorable. <laughs> um, what do you think about Babu Freck? Is is he the best cute gimmick? I don't remember ever seeing any toys of him, and I don't remember what he looks like, so I'm going to say <laughs> no. <laughs> um, also, just the last name Frick mm. uh, is not, in a lot of households, is not a appropriate word to say, which mm. is fucking stupid. But mm. <laughs> um, yeah, now a bunch of kids are saying Frick. Yeah. I love Frick. I I love to Frick. Mm. Frick Frack, Babu Frick. <laughs> yeah, I mean I just for for about 2 weeks after this movie came out that was like a meme, like, you know, little Babu Frick cuz he's adorable. He says, "Hey, hey," and everybody loves yeah. that. Um, but I don't think anyone has really mentioned Babu Frick since. Um, nope. but he is an adorable little guy and I hope he's I hope he's doing all right. There. I hope Babu Frick lives on in the Star Wars universe. I hope he's still going hey, hey to people to this day. Um, Ray senses that Chewbacca is alive, and the group mounts a rescue mission to Kylo's Star Destroyer. So we've got the main quest, which is to find the thing, to find the thing which will allow us to find Exegol. But right now we have to go on this little side mission to rescue Chewbacca. I didn't blow him up just then, a few minutes While ago. leaving C-3PO to be hacked, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. they can access his Sith translation. Right. And so... But it comes at a terrible price, because it will erase his memory. Yeah, oh, <gasps> C-3PO, he's been there. Anakin built this robot. He's like this little... Yeah, really, this is a movie about C-3PO. This entire Star Wars series is just oh, about yeah. the journey of C-3PO. Oh, yeah, no, it really is, you know. You've uh, yeah, you've got Anakin, this little, like, eight-year-old kid who, like, invents a sentient fucking robot in his, like, house. Like, let's not forget, like, this is a little kid who lives in sand. Yeah, that, his, that like, is the one thing parents. I never understood about the Star Wars universe. It's just, like, somehow everybody is, like, an amazing engineer. Oh my god, yeah, like absolutely incredible. Phenomenal electrical engineer. Your ship breaks down? Oh, mm. you know, I know how to fix that. Mm, yeah. You know, my car breaks down, and I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. <laughs> let alone yeah. a goddamn spaceship with yeah, my no... sentient robot friend <laughs> who gets regularly disassembled, and I have to put his limbs back on all the time. Yeah. I definitely know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, th this little kid who, again... He lives in sand, <laughs> you know, like like poor as shit. Like is gonna get sold into slavery. He's like, not even poor seconds. as dirt. He's not yeah. even dirt poor. He's sand poor. Exactly. It's worse. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and but no, he he can invent a sentient fucking robot just like that. Anyway, yes, it's all very sad because C three PO. He's been there from the beginning. He's gonna lose his memory. Oops, sad. <laughs> a single tear. Not the character that complains about everything. <laughs> yeah, like, literally re reduced to a punchline in the previous two movies. You know, now we're supposed to care, like, oh my god, C-3PO. Oh god, not C-3PO. <laughs> like, literally, he's been he's been just a, the butt of the joke for the last yeah. two movies, but now he's, like, this incredibly poignant character. Um, 
All right. Ray recovers the dagger and has visions of Achi killing her parents. Well, here we go. Remember those parents? Remember how I was setting Ray up to be all this? Oh, what's her lineage going to be in The Force Awakens? It was going to be a whole big thing. And then and Ryan then... Johnson came in and pulled his pants down and just took a massive dump, a massive steaming shit on everything that I... He pissed his name on the Star Wars universe. Exactly. On everything that I built up. Well, guess what? Fuck that. Ray is the most important person. I don't care that Ryan says that her parents doesn't matter. Not okay. Maybe her parents don't matter. But guess what? Her grandparents. <laughs> oh, they matter a lot. Because Kylo tells Ray that you are Palpatine's granddaughter that's right palpatine this ultra cerebral plotting scheming evil dictator he fucks he fucks at least he fucked at least once he had a, he had a son that son got married to a daughter they wanted nothing to do with palpatine i don't love that my dad is like this genocidal dictator so we're just going to kind of run away but we have this kid and we can't bring the kid with us not really sure why i guess they just figure that it's too dangerous so we're gonna leave her in sand <laughs> like like every main protagonist of this universe has to get left in sand at some point <laughs> anakin luke ray so we're gonna leave her in sand and she's gonna be fucking sand poor too um and then she'll be safe because you know I don't know. She'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, fucking, we're like, we're not like leaving her with like a trusted family member or a friend or somebody. No, she's just gonna figure it out. She'll never even know that we knew that know that we existed. Um, yeah, like Luke was left with his aunt and uncle. Yeah. Ray was just abandoned. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, straight up. Like they're, like, they're just terrible parents. They dropped her off in Jakku and fucking yeeted their way out of there. I don't even think they landed the ship. I think they just, like, threw her out the window <laughs> should, on a drive-by. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pushed her out and kept going. Yeah. So, yeah, fuck you, Ryan Johnson. It's actually, her lineage is super important. Um, and also, this means that Ray is a very close connection to the dark side she's got the palpatine lineage and she did the forced lightning a minute ago that's kind of scary, scary. <laughs> well, uh, she might actually turn out to be the bad guy you know we're... kylo might be the good guy because he doesn't know if he wants to be a bad guy what's gonna happen <gasps> we're gonna have a really hard time convincing people that we didn't drink an entire bottle of jack daniels before this <laughs> i'm realizing that now like i am honestly though it would have helped it would have helped honestly you know i've i've got some uh, i've got some hard seltzers in the fridge downstairs I, I, I may need to indulge in those at some point before we're finished here <sighs> you know because uh this is this is this is tough this is tough um actually let me show you this because this folks at home might might get a kick out of this um a couple weeks ago i happened to you i told you the story Reed. i happened to find myself in a, uh, a cbd shop um and they had many fascinating products um cool you're gonna put this on the internet i <laughs> Well, CBD is legal. It does not contain the, I, uh, the chemical compounds. I, that Reed Chrisman, do not condone this behavior. <laughs> uh, Jago tells the story uh, as an individual, not oh, on, oh, oh no, not now as part now, of this joint adventure, not representing him now, our partnership as... and friendship, but as an individual. I look at him presenting now as the good Christian boy. I I know you have uh, you have you have sampled a uh, a uh, I will an, an, castrate you an, an <laughs> you intoxicant or two. <laughs> I don't want an employer to be like, oh my god, he went to a CBD shop. No, well, that was that was that well, was not me. I went to a CBD I, shop, and trust me, if you given I our eat the fifth. <laughs> well, I've been to a CBD shop, and trust me, given our given given our views, I don't think an employer is ever going to watch this. Oh, no, I don't. I don't <laughs> In fact, honestly, if you are an employer, a prospective If you made it this, this far, thank you. Give me a race. Yeah, no, we we could use the watch time, but I I, I want to show this off because I bought this. This is this is really fascinating. It's CBD infused water. Isn't that interesting? 
Yeah. I, I've heard of like cucumber water. Mm-hmm. I've seen Whole Foods asparagus water. Mm-hmm. And if this CBD water is like that and is not water that gets you high or at least water that calms you down, I will be severely disappointed. Would you like me to drink it? I would like you to read the label. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, yeah, I'll read the label. Okay, Nano CBD. Proprietary nano CBD extract derived from hemp. CBD stimulates the CB1 and CB2 receptors of the endocannabinoid and endocannabinoid system. The CB1 receptors are primarily in the brain, while the CB2 receptors are predominantly found in the immune system. Award winning CBD utilizing nanotechnology. 10 million nanograms CBD. That's about 10 milligrams. Why nanotechnology? By utilizing nanotechnology, we break down the CBD into nanoparticles similar, smaller than 100 nanometers in size, creating 10 million nanograms of CBD per bottle. We then add vitamins, minerals, and nutrients and infuse them in a nine plus pH alkaline water. CBD living water is created. This, prior, this proprietary process allows the nano size CBD to immediately penetrate into your body's cells, giving increased bioavailability at the cellular level. No waiting. Satisfied? I No, I don't know what the fuck it does. <laughs> I think you should t- drink some. I'm going to drink some, you know. Drink I'm just, some. In the spirit of this incredibly... <laughs> You See, you let me know whether mm. you feel refreshed and well hydrated or zooted out of your goddamn mind. Let's see. I'm 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 this I'm this, hoping for one of those and I won't let you know which. <laughs> yeah, this can only this can only help, I think. Chug, 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 chug. No, don't chug your water. That's really bad for you, actually. <laughs> Half a bottle to start. How does it I, taste? I can report. Tastes like good water. <laughs> um, I does not taste. It, does it taste more basic or more acidic? Um. Because Dasani no, is like acidic. Dasani's really yeah. Good. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it definitely. It tastes very basic. Very basic. Um. I mean, naturally, you know. As promised, it just tastes like water. It tastes like a good alkaline water. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Yeah, Check we'll, with me we'll find out in forty-five minutes or so. Um, anyway, back to back to what prompted this uh, this outburst: the rise of Skywalker. <clears throat> General Hux. Oh God. Already. <laughs> I just remembered this whole oh my god. Saves Poe, Finn, and Chewbacca from execution, revealing himself as the spy. Right. He so was the mole. General Hux. He was set up as like this really angry, like underling to Kylo in The Force Awakens. Reduced to just the, an absolute punchline. Yeah, he was, he was competing. W- it's him and Kylo are like two children competing for their parents' mm. affection <laughs> and attention. Yes. But the parent was Snoke and the children were General Hux and Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's... Um... Yeah, it's it, this is one area where it's not like it's J.J. Abrams returning to what he set up in Force Awakens. This time we're going in a third direction. So first time you have this like extreme ideologue henchman in the Force Awakens, a joke <laughs> in The Last Jedi. And now he's a redeemed good guy in The Rise of Skywalker. Um, I mean, despite... So, so we're supposed to believe that this guy was so deep undercover that 
all of those times he very deliberately tried to kill the heroes, it was really just to protect them. No, 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 no. I think I think what happened was that after Supreme Leader Snoke died and um, Kylo Ren became Supreme Leader. Oh, was that's like, right. He oh, was fuck. Like... I don't like this guy. Right. And this guy is my boss now. And he <laughs> sucks. Um, I quit. Let me yeah. help the Resistance take down Kylo Ren. Cause yeah. I, yeah, I, I remember now. Yeah, he was disaffected. So he just casually defects to the other side. Um, Without anyone knowing. Yeah, which also... I mean, I know he doesn't like Kylo Ren, but I mean, he, he he knows, like, he's on the inside, so he knows what's happening with the First Order. Like, he knows that what's about to happen is the First Order is on the verge of total victory. And he's decided, just because I don't like the guy who's in charge, I'm now going to defect to the losing side that is literally a hair's breadth away from getting wiped out just because I don't like Kylo Ren. Good writing, JJ. Well yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, Good thank job. you, JJ Abrams and Batman v Superman writer Chris Terrio. You you nailed it. Um, hey, bonus fact: uh, this is actual real Star Wars canon. Did you know mm-hmm. that General Hux's mom's name was Martha? No. No, I, I have no fucking idea, but like, it feels like it. No, I, 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 I know you're fucking with me, but I mean that could be true though. That's it's, the thing is that it it could yeah. be true. <laughs> Okay, so, after allowing the group to escape, oh, surprise, Hux is discovered and executed by Allegiant General Pride. Duh. Yeah, that was, that was a, he made a whole deal about, like, oh, you have to shoot me so it looks like I put up a fight and you escaped. <laughs> and then, like, the very next scene he's in, he just gets shot and killed. Yeah, and like... like- Obviously. Doesn't get a chance to do it. Like, why? Why even put that in the movie? What did he think was going to happen? Like, seriously? Like, like, is he is he that stupid? He couldn't see this coming. That is like the complete opposite of Chekhov's gun. Like, <laughs> like they set up. Oh, I'm gonna try to deceive them uh, so I can help you again in the future, and then he immediately gets killed. Yeah, and it's just like, why even go through that? It like, makes me wonder: is is General Hux really just that stupid? I mean, is that I think so. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, cause honestly... I think he might very well be. Yeah, so, there you go. The group flies the Falcon to the Wayfinder's coordinates on a moon in the Endor system. Okay, so now we get back to the scene you were describing. Ray retrieves the Wayfinder from the crashed second Death Star, but she is met by Kylo, who destroys the Wayfinder and duels her. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say about this scene. It is very stupid on many levels. The first level is what you mentioned. The other level is, it's almost like in this scene, did J.J. Abrams not go back and rewatch the, um, the, uh, what's it called? Um, Return of the Jedi? Because in that movie, (laughs) where we see the destruction of the second Death Star, Second Death Star. Second Death Star. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. kicking but... in already. <laughs> Maybe I'm feeling it already. It did say no waiting. <laughs> um, the Second Death Star. That motherfucker explodes into a billion different pieces. It is obliterated. Like, that thing explodes and... That's, it's almost like there is no remnant of it. Like, it's a, it's a boom and it's gone. Yeah. But in this movie we see a solid fucking, like, like a third of this thing intact on this one moon. Which, I mean, even if we accept that, okay, it did break off into these big pieces, even though we explicitly saw it shatter beyond recognition in Return of the Jedi, the impact of this thing crashing through the atmosphere, falling onto not even this, a planet, a moon... Would have destroyed it. Like it wouldn't have just landed gently. Wasn't it would it have established destroyed this too planet. that the Death Star was the size of a moon. Exactly. Yeah. This thing was like a third of that, like a solid third at least. So it and it didn't destroy the moon at all. It just like landed. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I think in The Mandalorian Season 3, we're going to find out that some of those Empire Pockets tried to build a third Death Star. Oh, yeah. And that's... There you go. What broke. Yeah, there, there it is. yeah so this is actually yeah. the remnants of the unrevealed third Death Star that are going to be in the in the new uh, Ryan Johnson trilogy of film. That is, that is definitely not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, it's stupid. Just... There's no way, I'm sorry, but there's no way you could go back and rewatch Return of the Jedi and tell me that this piece broke off of that ship. Like, it was obliterated. Yeah, I mean, if if they want to retcon that, that's fine. Okay, oh, Peach, hello. I have a kitten. <laughs> Hi, Peach. She's trying to crawl across my keyboard, and I don't want her to exit Skype. <laughs> um, I mean, if they want to retcon that, I think it's cool to have that is a setting exploring mm. the wreckage of the the death star if they actually like went ahead and did that mm-hmm. uh but all it was was a storehouse for this MacGuffin of the the wayfinder yep uh, and it could have been to get kylo and ray to fight yeah it could have been anywhere mm. so yeah dumb yep. again in a dying act Leia calls to Kylo through the Force, distracting him as Rey can get one good blow in on him. Um, so Leia's kind of doing the same thing that Luke did at the end of The Last Jedi. Distracts Kylo. Rey's able to stab him. Sensing Leia's death, Rey is overcome by guilt. So she heals Kylo literally a minute after stabbing him <laughs> um <laughs> talk about passive aggressive <laughs> i mean honestly and takes his tie fighter to ex- exile herself on acto like luke now we get to the next big fuck you ryan johnson moment you're gonna kill off luke skywalker i set him up in this like epic final shot of my movie reveal in the force awakens and then you just kill him like a bitch he goes out like a bitch in the last jedi he should have been there himself he should have been at the final battle anyway guess what i'm bringing him back and he's he is going he's going to do the opposite of what you did and the opening scene of your movie he throws with a lightsaber this time he's going to catch it he's actually going to say hey i wouldn't do that thing that you just saw me do in the last movie because this thing is way too important it's sacred um the whole jedi order you know all that stuff i said in the last jedi about how you know the jedi order you know really it's all meant to end you know i'm you know i'm i'm glad that i'm gonna be the one to leave all this in the past no actually i'm here all the other previous jedi are here we're all force ghosts everything is super important everything is sacred um you know yeah luke's force spirit tells ray that he was wrong to exile himself rather than helping the resistance he encourages her to face palpatine and gives her leia's lightsaber he leaves for exegol oh i'm sorry ray leaves for exegol in Luke's X-Wing fighter, using the Wayfinder from Kylo's ship. This X-Wing fighter that has been at the bottom of the sea for... Decades. <laughs> like 30 years, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Meanwhile... Just clarify. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we mentioned the pickled Snokes in a jar from the opening scene, right? Was that from the opening scene? I thought we'd just see that of uh, when she arrives on Exegol and sees Palpatine. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But yes, there were pickled snooks. <laughs> a lot of people thought it was uh, pickled clone bodies of mm-hmm. Palpatine himself, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure they were Snoke pickles. Yeah, no, yeah, they, they were definitely Snokes. Um, meanwhile, Kylo converses with the memory of his father, Han Solo. So like we said, even Harrison Ford couldn't escape this shit show. He, they, they drag him back. I can only imagine the size of the check that they must have cut, cut him oh my God, for yeah. this one five-minute scene, but he is back. Um, so Kylo throws away his lightsaber and reclaims his identity as Ben Solo. Woo! <laughs> Sensing Leia's so death. So loses the helmet, 
again. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's redeemed because he's banished. also loses the robes. Mm-hmm. So he's just wearing this like quilt vest, mm-hmm. which makes him look like a total dork. Yeah. <laughs> just putting that out there. I did not it like makes his, him, he, his he looks costume. Like a LARPer. He looks that. like a LARPer. He really does. Yeah. He does. It's bad. Yeah. So, since in Leia's death and Ben's redemption, because he's redeemed now, because he's Ben Solo, you know, forget all those atrocities he committed in the first two movies. Oh, he's yeah. He's redeemed now. Palpatine sends a Star Destroyer to destroy Kajimi as a show of force. <sighs> Ray transmits her coordinates to R2-D2, allowing the Resistance, now led by Poe and Finn, to follow her to Exegol. There she confronts Palpatine. He demands she kill him to allow his spirit to pass into her. So Palpatine, he's in his chamber in Exegol. And it's like this big audience chamber, and all of, it's got like a ring... Uh, like an amphitheater behind him, uh, this ring of seating, and they're all occupied by the spirits of the past Sith, and they're all like... Oh, were those spirits? Mm, yeah, they were like spirits. Though. Oh, I thought they were yeah. like actual, like just tens of thousands of like Sith That's... people watching it, enchanting, yeah. and it's like, there's supposed to be the same number of Jedi as there are Sith. That's like how the Force always balances itself. Exactly. How are there like ten thousand Siths <laughs> just like sitting in this room chanting? Yeah, that, yeah. The, 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 that's the thing is that yeah, I, it, in the movie it kind of seems like these people are actually in this room, but no, they're all just the spirits of past Sith, and they're all like doing this like really like dark chanting, Ooh, gotcha. the ritualist. Ooh, gotcha. Exactly. Ooh, gotcha. And also Palpatine, because he's so old and withered, he's like hooked up to this like Gladys like thing. Yeah. I thought That's... I thought that was really cool. Mm. I like that visual a lot. Yeah, it um, it was cool. Yeah. Should have used it for Snoke or I don't know. They they yeah. could have yeah. They could have done but, a lot of stuff, but yeah, but the, but that visual is definitely cool. <laughs> So he he wants Ray, you know he's it's the classic let the hate flow through you, you know he wants he wants her to strike me down, ah! you know so that he can so that his spirit can pass into her unlimited power exactly exactly because strike she me is... down let my spirit flow through you exactly because she is I his... am all the Sith. <laughs> he is all the Sith, and she is his granddaughter, so it's like, okay, I'm just going to use you as my next vessel for taking over the galaxy. Um, meanwhile, the Resistance launches an attack on the Sith forces, including the Sith fleet. Also, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ray, I am your peepa. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, but obviously, the Resistance is immediately just getting fucked beyond recognition. Also, oh, totally. somehow, they managed to find a way to bring back the, like, giant horse creatures from The Last Jedi. Because there's a scene where uh, Rose and Finn are, like, riding on the top of one of these Star Destroyers for some reason. Uh, I don't remember why. I thought, those, no. were, I thought those were new creatures that the... Um defected stormtroopers had on that moon planet i thought they were the same like horse creatures i don't i don't think they were i think they were different but, but even they so were, they were originally gonna like land on the ground and then storm the control tower mm-hmm. because you know all of these ships have to be controlled by the same control tower and otherwise they don't know where to go right it's up uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but then they catch on and they're like, oh, shut down the control tower. Let's just broadcast from one of the ships. And then yeah. they're like, oh, it has to be the ship that's at the front of the line, even though it's like a giant cube of ships. Uh, mm. But they're like, this one's at the front, so it must be sending the signal. So then they storm it, uh, having the creatures run on the deck of the ship. Um yeah, all they I definitely remember couldn't that... just transfer the signal to another ship after that. Yeah, yeah. All I remember is that it was the stupidest shit I had ever seen in my life because you have them like riding on the top of one of these star destroyers. All one of the first of all, they're in the vacuum of space, so there is. And they're that. All, they're in the atmosphere of this planet. And sure, that's all. 
But even so, all one of the pilots of one of these ships has to go is just go. And literally. <laughs> yeah, just. Exactly. Exactly. And this whole problem is solved. Not so, to mention that the ship itself has, like, guns, like, turrets mounted yeah. to the ship. But they're unable to, like, point down low enough yeah. and to, also, like, shoot them off. We need to mention that, you know, the resistance are getting so badly beaten at first. But let's not forget, because Palpatine has a thousand of these ships, they're all so close together that, as we saw, one Holdo maneuver would destroy all of them, just because the cascade mm. reaction. Like, that, just you just need one ship to do that, come in at light, at, at light speed, and all those ships, they're all so close together, they would all be destroyed immediately. Um, you know, you would get the first in the initial strike, and then just the explosions and the ships falling would destroy the rest. So, or at least most of them. So, nobody thought to do that, I guess. <laughs> that was a whole movie ago. Forget about it. All right. Lando if I was, sudden... if I was writing a, a sci-fi movie, and I had light speed travel mm -hmm. uh i would make it so when you're traveling light speed you just phase through everything well yeah kind of That's... how light is both a wave and a particle yeah so you don't have to worry about running into planets well that well that you well, can't that's... pull off a hold o maneuver and ruin like <laughs> the combat theory in the entirety <laughs> of the star wars universe well, that's the thing is that for the first seven of these movies, we assume that's how it worked. Like yeah. going light speed was just like entering a new plane of existence. And then when you exit light speed, you're back at the spot you're tr intending to be at. But as we as we now know, traveling at light speed is very literal, which means you cannot hit a planet, a moon, an asteroid, a if you speck hit of a dust. Yeah, speck of dust, then you'd be dead. Shredded instantly, you know. It's it's stupid. Um, but here we go. Lando suddenly arrives, leading reinforcements from across the galaxy. All of those... To this, to this planet that... Uh, you needed a special map to find yes. to navigate through like a solar flare mm. storm cloud. Yeah. So the map wasn't just like, oh, here are the coordinates of this planet. Mm -hmm. It was like, here's how you get here without dying. Yes. That's why you need the wayfinder. Mm -hmm. So they get there and then they just send out their coordinates and people just show up. <laughs> and let's not forget. Being able to like navigate this incredibly <laughs> dangerous path. To yeah, and and let's not forget that again. This is J.J. Abrams so deliberately flipping off what Ryan Johnson said in the Last Jedi. What was the whole point of the climax of that movie? We're desperate. We're on our last legs. We're going to send out one last desperate message for help. Please, anybody who is invested in fighting the First Order, come help us because we're about to be destroyed, and nobody answers. Yeah, nobody shows up. Not a single fucking ship. Nobody. And now, in this movie, they're even worse off. Like, like they are literally, like, they're as bad off as they were from the end of The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah. And Palpatine is back. And he has a thousand Star Destroyers, which are all Star Killers themselves. But now everybody shows up to help. <laughs> like, you know. Maybe it just Lando has, just, has, a, has the, oh, there's way a way words. about him. Yeah. You know? I don't know. He can convince the entire galaxy to switch sides and go on a suicide mission. Um, he couldn't even convince Vader not to alter the terms of the deal. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah but now he can. But now he can. He lost his entire... ship in a game of cards to Han Solo. <laughs> I don't know how this guy could convince anybody of anything. Yeah, but you see, but now but he has now... the reputation of a droid fucker. Yes. <laughs> I don't, that, he is not an influential person. A droid fucker, a degenerate gambler, <laughs> an incompetent administrator. But yeah, no, he can. He has convinced the entire galaxy now to go on a suicide mission to help the resistance <laughs> against a Palpatine who has a thousand Star Killer ships. And you know, and and it was you could tell what they were doing. This came out in 2019, the same year as Avengers Endgame, and you could tell. 
Star Wars wanted their very own endgame final battle moment where everybody shows up and it's so epic and it's awesome and everybody's here. And it just was it was it was not I, earned. It was not earned at all. Like they what Kathleen Kennedy and the Lucas team, Lucasfilm team failed to understand is that that moment in Endgame was so meticulously built up over the course of more than a decade. Like like that was like such a pent up such a release of pent up energy. After not just, so not much just, accomplishment over a it's decade. Not even like a decade worth of time, but also mm-hmm. like 22 films uh, yes exactly star wars at that point had had eight <laughs> yes 22 films and not yet a single critical bomb every one of them had been yes. a critical and summer- commercial smash that was how endgame earned that moment star wars was like well we're star wars so shouldn't we shouldn't we be but able to do the same i will thing? say mm. they did have the writer of batman v superman Mm. And I feel like they also wanted their own, like, Justice League endgame moment yeah, way exactly. before. I mean, they, they tried to do Avengers before setting up the MCU. Exactly. That was what DC did, and it didn't work. But exactly. they tried it again with Star Wars, and it also didn't work. It it didn't work at all. Um, ben arrives on Exegol, where he overpowers the Knights of Ren and joins Rey. So, again, I mean, these are, like, there's, like, six of them and they're all supposed to be almost as good of fighters as kylo is and it's like it's it it was very much like the um the red throne room battle in the last jedi where they all just like kind of politely line up and take their take take turns getting the shit kicked out of them they don't all try to mob him at once um and he kills all of them his six top enforcers just kills them all and it's like barely doesn't even shed a tear too yeah like presumably these were people that he worked with for a number of years yeah trained with went on missions with bonded with Mm. but no he's a good guy now and they're bad guys so you know we don't care when we kill them yeah just so yeah just have a lame fight scene move on okay so he joins ray but Palpatine drains their power to rejuvenate himself. He incapacitates Ben and attacks the Resistance fleet with Force Lightning. Okay. <laughs> this scene. As I just described, he's drained Rey and Kylo of their power. Kylo is incapacitated. He uses all this power that he's just taken from them to launch... A massive barrage of force lightning into the sky like a fucking EDM light show to destroy the Resistance fleet. And it is quite possibly the campiest thing we've ever seen in Star Wars. Like, that was like almost peak lack of that was almost the peak of the lack of self-awareness for the sequel trilogy and honestly it was awesome like that movement that moment was awesome but it was was so cool visual but the fact that it didn't like instantly blow up any of the ships because remember when ray used force lightning Mm. earlier and she didn't even mean to and accidentally blew up a ship yeah oh wait we never talked about that yeah oh i guess we kind of did but Surprise, Chewbacca wasn't on that ship. He was on a different pr- transport ship that we just yeah. never saw. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, so Force Lightning can blow up a ship. Mm. Rightly so. You know, you're sending 21.1 gigawatts of energy through. Uh, <laughs> um, through a spaceship. And yet when Palpatine does it, all it does is stun their weapon systems and their navigation system. Like, it it stuns the ship so they can't move. Mm. They don't start... Well, I guess they did start falling. It was basically like an EMP attack, but the ships and all the people in them were fine. Yeah. So a very ineffective attack. Looked cool. Very ineffective. Yeah, I like so much of this movie. Looked, Looked awesome. But you cannot think about it for more than two seconds. It just, it does yeah. not work. 
Um, so, weakened, Ray hears the voices of the past Jedi, all of the past Jedi, who give her strength. <clears throat> Palpatine attacks her now with the lightning, but Ray deflects it using Luke and Leia's lightsabers. She's got both of them now. Obliterating Palpatine. It's not even how the Force works. Yeah, so Palpatine is <laughs> or how shooting. Lightsaber. Palpatine is shooting lightning at Ray. Ray is reflecting the lightning back, <laughs> somehow reflecting the lightning back at him with, with her lightsabers. But he doesn't think to just stop, <laughs> even yeah. though it's destroying himself. <laughs> um, no, it's it's because he became like a DC current. Mm. He, he became a closed circuit when that happened. Oh, yeah. So yeah, he was just... shooting out the electricity. It was deflecting off the lightsabers and going back into him to then be mm. shot out again. It was just... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that... she She's got the two lightsabers. Palpatine is shooting the lightning. And she's, like, struggling so much to walk forward. Even <laughs> though, like, the lightning is not pushing her back. Yeah, that's the it's thing just, is that it's just being deflected. I remember that looking really stupid. Like, unlike the the original Force Lightning attack from Palpatine, that looked cool, and it, that that looked cool but was stupid. This looked stupid and was stupid. Like mm. if we if we saw it like push her back, like mm. remember when Luke was being tortured by Palpatine? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And like you know, struck by lightning, and he was in agony, mm. and it was like really painful to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but Ray doesn't get it. Do the force lightning. Have Ray like get hit, fly across the room, mm. is badly injured. So that mm-hmm. way, when she's like struggling to walk forward, it's like, oh, she's injured, but is still fighting. Yeah. But. No. Yeah, they don't can't do that. have anything nice in this movie. Yeah. So, Ray is a Palpatine, and she also destroys Palpatine. This Ray, our Ray, from the sequel trilogy, destroys the main antagonist from prequels, main antagonist from the original films. Now the ultimate antagonist <laughs> retroactively made the the ultimate antagonist of the sequel films, because he created Snoke. But Ray is able to destroy him using her two lightsabers that she got and reflecting and the power of walking forwards <laughs> and the power of walking forwards because oh but you see read remember she says i am old jedi so yeah well she tried to do like an iron man like i am yeah. iron man she's like exactly. and i am all the jedi <laughs> yeah and then uh she dies Mm. Uh, cause I guess walking forward with two lightsabers, uh, takes it out of takes up a lethal amount of energy. Mm. Uh, but surprise, Kylo, when he fell down the hole, he didn't fall down the hole and yeah. climbed back up. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's really how Palpatine survived, but we never saw that. Mm. Uh, and he's like, oh no, you're dying. Let me give all my life energy to you to atone for what I've done, even though I've never shown an ability to heal people through the Force, and that's only something you've been shown to do. Yeah. Uh, so then so, he heals her, uh, and then dies. Yeah, so this is, I think, one of like, the biggest, yeah, this is one of the biggest ones we have to talk about in terms of new Force abilities. Yeah. You can, according to this movie, <laughs> you can straight up use the Force to bring people back from the dead. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know if she had been fully killed at that point. Well, I mean, it says in the, the synopsis here that obliterating Palpatine before dying. Yeah, it says that she died. Oh, then fuck. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, I guess you have the power to yeah. Okay, like, Force healing, mm. that makes sense. Mm. Kind of. It's like mm. you're using the Force to accelerate the body's natural process of healing wounds. And you just accelerate it. Sure, I'll buy that. But like life force, life mm-hmm. energy, 
being able to transfer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll even buy Palpatine stealing theirs to try to rejuvenate himself. Mm. Sure, why not? Um, but bringing back someone from the dead is where I draw the line. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a sacred Christian non-necromancy households and I will not stand for it. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, um sorry Qui-Gon Jin. Sorry, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Sorry, you sorry guys. Could have could have could have Sorry. Open, no. Sorry, Leia, who literally just died earlier in this movie. Sorry, Anakin Skywalker, about all your limbs. I could yeah. have saved them, but chose yeah. not to. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, all of you, just just anyone, because it doesn't even have to be another Jedi that you're on. It could be any person, anyone who has ever died in the Star Wars, in Star Wars, could have been revived. Oh well, sucks. If only we had known about this before now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. Okay, can we can we talk about the kiss? I feel oh, yeah, like so, we sh- I feel like we need to talk about the kiss. Yeah. So yeah. So this, that that's what's happening at this moment in the scene. As Kylo is transferring over to Rey, and she's coming back to life as he's dying, they have a little moment. They have a little smooch. We'll kiss. They're in love now. Yeah. A big old kiss. With their oh. wet lips. Because <laughs> it's been teased throughout the entire thing that, like, you oh, it's a will they, won't they hero and nemesis type of situation. But what is the rise of Skywalker but love persevering? I mean, I call my dick my Skywalkers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, no, it's these two, these two have had certainly a connection and a chemistry over the previous two films in the first, you know, three quarters of this movie. But that chemistry has never been romantic. You know, no. These two. No, not in any way. Yeah, these two have never had any romantic attraction or investment in the other. They hate each other. <laughs> How many times have these two tried to kill each other, including just a little bit earlier in this movie? I do not for a second buy that just because Ben Solo is now redeemed because he decided he was by taking off some of his clothes and saying, I'm a good guy now, that now Ray is going to fall in love with him? What? And that he's in love with her? Like, what? Well, she kissed him, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What, 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 Why? What are, we, what are we doing? Ray, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Ray, like, oh, like, okay. Like, this sure. is not a good start to a relationship. This yeah, is, like, like, borderline necrophilia now, because he's yeah. dying. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, like, okay, like, I can understand being grateful for not being dead, but, like, that's not kiss. You don't, that's like hug worthy. That's not exactly. a kiss. Exactly. Yeah. Like you, you don't love this guy. Like he. It's been his personal mission for years now to kill you <laughs> and to ruin your life utterly and completely. Earlier that day, you were fighting to the death. Yes. On the wreckage of the old Death Star. Earlier, earlier today, remember how you stabbed him through the chest <laughs> with the intent to kill him. <laughs> I mean, we remember that, right? Like, 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 literally earlier today, you killed him, and then you revived him, or like you healed him. Dumb. I I remember. See, here's the thing with these movies: is that when you're watching them, you know, it's it's bright, it's colorful. The action is entertaining because you're not really thinking about it. Um, and it's fun. These movies are actually pretty funny in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but that kiss just completely took me out of it. I was like, yeah. suspension of disbelief gone in an instant. This felt so forced. Yeah. Why probably Hollywood execs. Yeah. No, the, the, I was the, just like, the, the climax of the movie was just fucked on so many levels yeah. like you know and, and you're right it is very diverting you know when you're watching it it is engaging it is interesting you are being entertained but 
this is what I've been saying the whole time. You you can't think about it. The moment you employ any logic to this movie, it just evaporates. It really does. So, you know, in the moment, yeah, you're sitting there, you're watching it on the big screen for the first time, and you're just overwhelmed by it all. But the moment you leave the theater and you start thinking about it and you start talking about it, you realize this doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, just in the theater, as soon as that kiss happened, yeah, I was just like, I am done with this movie now. I'm done with this whole trilogy. I am done watching this movie. I am yeah. sitting in this theater. I will continue to sit in this theater until credits roll, but I am done watching this movie. Yeah, absolutely. The Resistance defeats the remaining Sith forces, while others across the galaxy rise against the First Order. So, this, this guy had a thousand star killer star destroyers and they got obliterated by the scrappy ragtag band of ships that are like one three hundredth their size and also like one three hundredth uh as numerous too yes yeah exactly I mean, this was thousands of ships floating in the sky mm. and you know in formation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how all of them got destroyed. Was it one of those situations where you blow up one and then they all blow up? Is that what happened? Or um, I don't, maybe I don't really it might have been something like that. I um, hate that. Yeah. As the resistance celebrates their victory, Ray visits Luke's abandoned homestead on Tatooine. She binds <sighs> Luke and Leia's lightsabers together. They sink into the sand and combine to create her lightsaber. No. No. That is not at all what happened. She she places them in the sand and then uses the force to push them to essentially bury them. Mm. And then off screen, she had just made her own lightsaber. She had it with her. Wow, okay, she didn't like so... fuse them into a new lightsaber. That never happened. Yeah, that that doesn't sound right, but okay, so it must be wrong on Wikipedia. She, but. yeah, she shows up to Tatooine with three lightsabers. Yeah. One is hers, and then Luke and Leia's are bound together and buried mm -hmm. in his. A uh, which honestly is a little disrespectful to Leia when you remember that she grew up on um, um, a completely different planet. Yeah, she was from. Um, oh, where was she from? Um, it's the the planet that they blew up in A New Hope. Oh yeah, well, I'm bl I'm blanking on the name, but I, yeah, I know exactly right? what you're talking about. Does it start with an A? It has an A and an N in it, I think. Hmm. Gosh, yeah. Alderaan. Alderaan, yes. The princess of Alderaan, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, but no, she but, but... Her lightsaber gets buried in the sand of Tatooine. Yeah, everybody's going into the sand. Well, actually, now that I think about it, it would be pretty hard to bury it in the sand of Alderaan. This <laughs> one's no longer there. <laughs> yeah, so that's I guess true. Tatooine is appropriate. Yeah, I did. I take that back. Next best thing, yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, if you really wanted to go back to the source, you could go back to Coruscant, you know, because that's where they were conceived, I guess. Yeah, but uh, they wouldn't know that. Yeah, that, that, that would be... Now, that would be a real deep cut. I think it, um, it would have been interesting if she buried Leia's lightsaber with Han's blaster. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, that would be... That would be true, yeah. And then... Uh, I don't know where she'd put Luke's lightsaber, but... Is she still in possession of that blaster? I don't know what happened to that blaster. I yeah, assume I, it fell into the pit with yeah, that, Solo yeah, that, that's and his that's stab wound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as we all know, <laughs> just because you fall into a pit does not mean you die, as we've seen exactly. with Palpatine and Boba Fett. Yeah, also. this movie has a really strong track record of bringing back and Luke Skywalker. Had... Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, th this 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 movie has a really great great track record of bringing just back think, people I who we had you fall into a pit. Thought, you're Fell almost guaranteed to survive. Yeah, if you fall into a pit, J.J. Abrams will bring you back in this franchise. Yeah. <laughs> um, or John Favreau. Yeah. yeah. Either or. 
Yeah, but when John Favreau do it, he'll actually do it in a cool. Oh like, no, it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, a passerby asks her name. Seeing Luke and Leia's four spirits nearby, she responds that it is Ray Skywalker. Roll credits. <laughs> I think I I brought no notes to this movie. Mm. Uh, I did not do a rewrite, mm. but there are ideas that I think they could have played with that would have been really cool. Mm -hmm. One of the things that made a lot of sense that they had been setting up with the course of these three sequel movies is the idea of the gray Jedi. Mm. Are you familiar with this? You've told me about this before. Yeah, a great Jedi is someone who walks, walks the line between the light and the dark sides. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to have a mix of those force powers. Um, they're kind of discredited by the Jedi for not being true or pure Jedi. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're also not Sith. They're uh, not good or bad. They're all about maintaining balance between the force and maintaining balance between both sides um this would have been a very interesting concept to explore in the star wars universe on the big screen uh i feel like they were setting this up with you know ray contemplating the dark side and that whole cave scene which was really weird i didn't understand that cave mirror scene but oh yeah from last jedi yeah that was weird mm, but yeah. you know she's been fooling around with the idea of the dark side kylo ren is kind of disillusioned by the dark side but isn't fully good they could have had gray jedis yellow lightsaber it's not red but it's not blue or green mm -hmm. gray jedi um and that would have been really powerful if at the end of the movie um you know, what's her name? Ray. Ray what? And she thinks for a moment. Just Ray. <laughs> no lineage, no ties to any light side or dark side. She's not a Skywalker, but she refuses to be a Palpatine. Mm. Just Ray. Yeah, but you see, Ray, that would have been cool. This is J.J. Abrams, so she. Everybody has to be. It's all about families and lineages and you know history. It, it can never just be what it is. It's got to be connected to something. Like, at yeah. least for a brief second, Ryan Johnson did do what you were saying, and he allowed there to be a moment when Kylo is holding out his hand to Rey, and he's saying, let's build something new together. You know, obviously, he, he, he didn't even pursue that. It would have been really cool if he did pursue that, but there was that moment, at least, where the potential was there. Yeah. But, yeah, no. As fascinating as that would be to explore more fully, um, he didn't follow through with that in The Last Jedi, and we did not get that here. So, so that was The Rise of Skywalker. Um, it was a movie that I must say... It was I, a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. <laughs> I by enjoy, the, mm, by yeah, the strict, strict, most strictest terms of the definition yeah the most literal definitions of it yes it counts as a movie exactly yeah and so i will say in theater i enjoyed it a lot more than the last jedi but in hindsight i think it holds up as poorly if not even worse than the last jedi i really do i agree with that you know so, and I think that's a big part of why we've been putting off doing this video, because it's just such a drag to talk about. I mean, we've also both been super busy, but... Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the more literal, direct reason, but the kind of the, the philosophical reason... We've been reason, avoiding, <laughs> you know, the, been avoidant the, behavior. The philosophical reason is, I mean, it's just such a drag to talk about, because you just, the whole time you know, this is how it ends. Yeah. The, this epic story that has been the Skywalker saga, this is it. It ends on a whimper. And it's just so sad, you know, that, you know, there may be movies that will explore points in the timeline later than this. 
but there will never be another Skywalker Saga movie, you know, and that's, it's just too bad that, that this is it, you know. Yeah. Lucasfilm, their biggest franchise, one of the biggest franchises on the face of the earth, they just started making movies without a plan. It's unfathomable to me how any massive company just charges into this huge endeavor spanning half a decade and they don't go into it knowing or at least having some basic idea of where they want to end up they're just winging it yeah my god what an ill-conceived endeavor from the outset and yeah this is it this is how the skywalker saga ends and that is kind of depressing you know but We've arrived at the point of the video, I think, where we do have to, unfortunately, give this movie a score. I am going to give Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker, a 3 out of 10. I had the exact same score. <laughs> it, it is entertaining. Down to the decimal. Yes. Which is funny is. because we only count in whole numbers, but Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I mean it is entertaining. And when you're in the theater, you turn your brain off and you just enjoy all the Star Wars sights and sounds. But in hindsight, it just it has so many plot holes and plot conveniences, and there's so much tearing down of what was established in the previous movie. And we're so, and, and this is the worst part of it, we're just, we're rushing so much. Like, because we're tearing down everything that episode eight did, we now have to rush to wrap up the entire Skywalker saga in this one movie. And, yeah, I mean, so much of it just feels so unearned. Palpatine and his thousand Star Killer destroyers feels unearned. The Kiss feels unearned. The Knights of Ray feel unearned. The new Force powers or the Knights of Ren feel unearned. The new Force powers feel unearned. I mean, just any Force powers that Ray shows. Exactly. I mean, she never trains for them. The, the 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 whole Resistance fleet that shows up at the end feels unearned. Everything feels unearned. Bringing back Han Solo as a as a vision feels unearned. Everything feels Lando so as a just random cameo essentially. Yeah, yeah. And... The yeah, the only thing that the only character in this movie that does not have a massive asterisk next to their names. Because also you'll know we barely mentioned Poe and Finn and that whole crew. Like they're in this movie, but they they don't do anything really like that's that's actually something I was thinking about is that like even Ray who's mm -hmm. supposed to be the protagonist doesn't do much mm -hmm. and you know this entire like sequel trilogy was supposed to be a new story in Star Wars mm -hmm. um built on the legacy of the previous characters when in reality they can't really do anything without help from the older characters. Yeah. Which defeats the entire purpose. Yeah. I mean, they, they couldn't find the the clue, the the dagger thing without Lando. Mm. Uh, ben couldn't turn good without Han Solo. Mm. Ray couldn't train at all without Leia. Uh, also, they didn't have, they couldn't have a bad guy in this movie without Palpatine. <laughs> there was no Snoke without Palpatine. Yeah. And it's also, like if you yeah. want to continue the story, do that. Don't pretend like you're telling a new story, mm. but have everything reliant on all the old players. Yeah, and also I just want to mention this because I just realized we we were just talking about how every character that we had previously seen die in a pit comes back. The one character that we did see die in a pit that they don't bring back in this movie, which I thought was a huge missed opportunity. <laughs> Captain Phasma. You know, I mean like it's such a meme, the fact that she came back from the Force yeah, I'm Awakens. I'm surprised JJ didn't do anything with that. Bring bring her back a second time. Like it's like it wouldn't be that much of a stretch after the Force Awakens. Like just like it would be it would have been hilarious. And like I know they don't intend it to be hilarious, but it would have been one of the best moments in the movie if Captain Phasma showed up for a third time, like all charred and like, you know, just like, you know more furious than ever.
That would have been awesome. No helmet this time. Yeah. You know? Or they just the broken play. helmet. Yeah. Huge missed opportunity. I'm I'm now wondering how she survived in The Force Awakens. Because she was thrown down a trash compactor. Into a planet that exploded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the planet exploded like 15 minutes after she was thrown into a trash compactor. Yeah. I, she must have been like... There must have been like some troopers down by the trash compactor that heard her land and then start yelling. Mm. Or I guess she communicated immediately. Yeah, but and I mean, they rescued her and then they somehow knew to get on a ship and leave. Yeah, but, I don't the, know. but the point being that if she could somehow survive that, she should have no problem surviving the events of The Last Jedi. Like, yeah. you know, because almost There's, an identical thing there happens. is low key memeable, mm. but potentially interesting story. Mm. A stormtrooper so brainwashed. And so angry that they <laughs> slowly become a Sith. Oh, that would be. And you have that would Captain be awesome. Phasma become like a Sith. Over oh time. yeah, no that no, but the, but legitimately though, like, what if Captain Phasma is like a Sith trooper? Like, yeah, because you know, that, know, like that's the, the thing. It's like the Sith always kind of existed outside of the military structure. Yeah. They always seem to be at the top, yeah. which didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um. But Sith troopers but what if you, are what a thing that had one that was like a general, yeah, within yeah. the troopers. Yeah, but no, and, she just knew how to use the force and yeah. had like a lightsaber as well as you yeah. know the blaster. And, and it's not even theoretical. That is a real thing that exists in the expanded universe. You have red, blood red colored Sith troopers. That's a real thing that exists. And what if you know that? Are and they, that are would they, also do they use the force? Um, I... Like, actual Siths? Or are they, like, the Sith bodyguards that we see? I because don't that's, know. Because that's where I'm familiar with the red armor. Yeah, I I don't know the firm answer to that. But that that would also explain how she keeps surviving, if she does have some Force abilities. Yeah. You know, so that would have been awesome. And that would have been such an easy way to explain how does she keep surviving. She's a Sith trooper, you know, and, uh... But no, she's she, apparently she's dead for real in the Last Jedi. So whatever, stupid doesn't matter. Oh, well. <laughs> but um, yeah, just I just had to mention that. that that occurred to me. That's the one character that died in the pit that doesn't come back. <sighs> but yeah, like I was saying, this movie you're watching it. It is diverting. It is entertaining because you're seeing all the Star Wars sounds and sights, and it all feels like it should be a lot of fun, but you can't think about it. You know, this movie is truly the most nihilistic movie in the in the Star Wars um, in the in the Skywalker saga, because you know it's just like we're just you know like I keep saying nothing really matters. You know, it's just everything just is what it is. You know, like like this movie, it drapes itself in the history of the Skywalker saga, but doesn't really care about it. It yeah, just cares about doing what it wants to do. It's a par- It's like a parody of star wars exactly. or it's like it's an empty shell like this this movie is so far up its own ass it can smell <laughs> last week's dinner <laughs> and it's just like i don't know i i i think part of it is that i mean ryan johnson also fell victim to this a little bit but i think jj just sees at least now and with the star wars stuff he just sees everything as black and white yeah. like it was very there was nothing nuanced about the sequels in any yeah. way. Nothing Absolutely. nuanced, nothing thought-provoking, challenging, um, worth thinking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just good guy, bad guy. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, the original Star Wars was like that. But not in totality. Because mm-hmm. at the end, you have Darth Vader, you know, becoming the good guy and killing Palpatine. Yeah, actually you earning have, his redemption. Yes. You have Luke struggling with, do I want to be a good guy or do I want to reunite with my father and help rule the galaxy? Um, you know, it's a story. It's a, about resistance and, you know, losing fighters and, you know, it's. And it's it's a little bit crazy, too, if you think about it. Um 
but I, I don't think the sequels could have the liberty of doing that because it wasn't new material. This was the same material. You're you need to expand on it in some yeah. way. Um, and he didn't. He was just yeah. very kind of. And you know why? Because if you had a plan, you could then use that as a roadmap to then branch off and explore some different things. But they didn't have a plan, so they just stayed in that tight little comfort zone that is what we did before. Yeah. So, yeah, and and I mean, like you said, I mean, you know, J.J. Abrams clearly had no interest in exploring any of those nuances. Ryan Johnson came close. Like, again, it was right there. (laughs) Like, it was a layup that he set up for himself. But even he didn't pursue that. Um, He set up a layup layup and then spiked the ball. (laughs) Like, honestly. Like, I, I yeah, but yeah, they, yeah, they just never had the balls to just commit to really leaning into something that isn't the Jedi Sith dichotomy. And, uh, you know, I think that's, um, you know, that's much the detriment of the whole sequel trilogy because the prequels for all the prequels problems, you know, it did show us kind of, it was nuanced. uh, Yeah, it was nuanced. It went into the politics of the good side versus the bad side. Exactly. It's not all good and it's not all bad. Exactly. Yeah, it, it showed us that the Jedi, obviously, who had been so lionized in the original films, no, they were actually kind of like this council of ineffectual dweebs who were so they were who, they were fly. They were very yeah, fly. Yeah. Who, who who literally could not see what was could not see the literally the Republic being stolen out from under them because they were so you know highfalutin and uh you know holier than thou um you know and that was different that was interesting like you said it explored the politics of it it explored the it explored the different power dynamics that exist in these these ancient orders the jedi and the sith we saw Um, new and different planets yeah i'll put that out it wasn't just another desert planet and then like another forest planet (laughs) exactly yeah yeah how about that yeah but uh but oh but we had had never seen a salt planet before oh there you go i mean that's that's (laughs) true i actually did like crate i thought that was the conceptually that was pretty cool yeah crate was all right but it wasn't even the best new planet that we got in the oh not disney era that 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 would be scarif you know scarif was great yeah i loved scarif um also when she first tries to rescue uh galen or so oh, on yeah. that like rocky ocean storming planet yeah it actually it looks a lot cool. like exegol yeah a little bit yeah but just like yeah. covered in water yeah i mean obviously it is an exegol but they, they look kind of similar the one uh, thing i don't understand about the star wars universe is how every planet is one biome Mm, yeah and like yes a lot of planets are like that mars is just a big red desert Mm -hmm. jupiter is all gas stuff like that but for planets to contain life i'm pretty sure there needs to be a diversity of biomes yeah that would be ideal (laughs) like scarif is cool it's like everything's a beach that's fun Mm -hmm. that's like a mario galaxy type of thing but like (laughs) a planet that is entirely desert Mm. it's so boring yeah, i'm is, pretty yeah. sure we've had like three or four of those by now yeah and we i mean tatooine and... jack who the planet that the pod races were on mm, the yeah. coliseum thing um and i'm sure there's another one somewhere too yeah which which i mean yeah i just you know talking about desert planets i mean I, because I, I don't know if you've seen dune yet the the the, the new dune. i haven't yet um, but uh, yeah, but that's like a really interesting desert planet. Jakku is not an interesting desert planet. No, Jakku is a junkyard. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, and and Tatooine is only interesting because <laughs> ja- of the Jakku is an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, literally, it is. And I mean, Tatooine is only interesting because of the people who've lived on it in the past. Yeah. You know, there's nothing particularly special about those deserts. It's just a desert like i that's why that's why i don't even call it a desert. i just say that they live in sand because there's yeah. nothing there's nothing they, interesting there's sand for yeah yeah there's just sand so um so yeah you know so i think to cap this off because this is kind of the end of this chapter of our recapping of disney era of star wars you know 
in 2022, we'll start recapping just the new stuff. We've got the Book of Boba Fett coming up real soon. We're going to get Andor coming out, I think, next year. Um, I think that Patty Jenkins Star Wars movie is coming out, uh, Rogue Squadron. I think that's going to be Christmas next year. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is the end of our Disney Hour retrospective. It's all going to be new stuff going forward. So I would ask, what's the best Disney era Star Wars thing? that we've reviewed so far, but obviously that would be the Mandalorian. Yeah. So what's the best Disney era Star Wars movie? Uh, Rogue One. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know, and I, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to also say Rogue it's, One. <laughs> it's what Rogue One versus Solo, because or? we're not going to pick the main trilogy. <laughs> I would say, yeah. I, I mean, mean, maybe Force Awakens, but... The, the three that I was debating between is Force Awakens, Rogue One, and Solo. Yeah. And for me, the thing that puts Rogue One over the top, over the other two, is that Solo, I liked how refreshingly small-scale it was. It wasn't, obviously, Jedi versus Sith, or even with Rogue One. It wasn't even about the war. It was just this cool space, western filling in the backstories of one of the cooler characters in the Star Wars universe. Um, but the problem with Solo is that the villain is pretty unremarkable. And it's just, it's not... I mean, no hate against Paul Bettany. We love Paul Bettany. No, no, he's great. He's great. But, um, you know, it just, you know, it wasn't the but most... They made up. they made up this new organization that we also never see again. Yeah. I think which... it'd be cool if the Mandalorian brings it up, or mm, Boba yeah. Fett brings it up book of little fat but yeah i mean i've shared with you a theory that i think that crimson dawn is going to have a future in if not boba fett then certainly the obi-wan series because as we saw darth maul yeah still out there got his metal legs he's back (laughs) so um, he's another person who fell in a pit and lived lived. there you go it all oh my god Um, but yeah, but you know, I think the visual language of that movie isn't the most interesting and the villain isn't the most memorable, even though, as you said, Paul Bettany is great. Um, The Force Awakens, I think, was easily the best of the sequel trilogy, but obviously we've examined the problems that that movie has in our first episode. Rogue One is just a really solid war movie, sci-fi war movie. And, you know, it's, I think it's refreshing that at the end, they, they tried a lot of new stuff. At the end, everybody dies. That's, that's, that, that is actually bold and new and different. Yeah. And as we said, the thing that really seals the deal is I firmly believe the best Disney era, certainly, certainly the best Disney era scene of any Star Wars anything, if not the whole the whole Star Wars franchise, the best scene is the Darth Vader hallway scene. Like, that scene is so legendary. It is, I mean, it just, it is. So, um, yeah, it's Rogue One. Rogue One is the best. <laughs> Ironically, best, the best one... new Star Wars content in movie form. Yeah, the one the one thing that we didn't give it give its own, epi- its own episode to is the best one. <laughs> Damn. Oh, well, next time. (laughs) All right. Well, that was our review of Star Wars Episode Nine, The Rise of Skywalker. This has been a total, (laughs) this has been a total train wreck. Star Wars Conversations, Disney era. There it is. There it is. We did it. We did it. We didn't want to do it, but we came back. It was going to be four episodes, and it's more like 17, because that's how we do, but... I drank half of the CBD water, and I can say it has helped. <laughs> um, Are and, you feeling uh, anything, though? Um, honestly, because this whole bottle is only 10 milligrams, and I only drank half of it, so that's about five. Oh, yeah. That's not going to be enough to do much. But, uh, yeah, that's fair. It couldn't hurt, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's it. That's a wrap. <laughs> Star Wars... God, it's embarrassing, but we love it. So, <laughs> um, thank you all so much, as always, for joining us for whatever this was. <laughs> we'll, fi- we'll figure it out in post. We'll figure out what this was in post. Um, it just and- sits in the draft folder forever. 
<laughs> yeah, if anyone ever sees this, we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, stay tuned because we still have a couple big things planned for the rest of this year. Uh, I know famous last words on this channel. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, uh, we're going to go see Spider-Man. That's really exciting. We're going to be, we're going to get that review out for oh you. My God, and man. then something special to end out the year. So stay tuned for that. But um, thank you all so much for watching. Reed, want to close us out on one of your famous, uh, one of your famous quotes? Um, no, I'll just have, I'll just have my sister's cat, Peach, say goodbye. Oh, well, there you say go. Say goodbye, Peach. <laughs> Yeah, look, look at that. She, she resents that we've only just brought her on for the Rise of Skywalker episode. Like, <laughs> She's furious. Yeah. 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 Y y like, you couldn't even bring me on for Rick and Morty season four. I mean, come <laughs> on. <guys. laughs> All right. Well, take care. May the force be with you. And. But only the first six. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and a, cu a couple others. Yeah. And, and, and Rogue One and Soul. Yeah. Too. There you go. See ya. Good night, everybody.